Hey everybody, David Burns, the Certified Master Beekeeper. Good to be with you for another video today. Today I want to talk about uh, Puxahani Phil seeing his shadow and what that means for us, if you believe in that. And nonetheless, no matter what you believe in that, whether he saw his shadow or not, it's still winter time. Today it's 28 degrees right now, and it's, there's no wind, a little bit of wind out of the north, but my building is blocking it. And so my bees that have the winter bee kind board on it are flying. We're going to show you that up close in just a minute. The large hive beside it has no activity at all flying in, in and out of the entrance. So we're going to open that up, make sure there's a lot of bees in there, give it a winter bee kind so it can do what the one beside it's doing. And I'll give you some tips on what you can do to get your bees through the winter because in the next few days this weekend here in Illinois, we're dropping below zero. These three hives sound really good. I put my ear against them, so you know there's there's it's still alive. These that one's in the shade, so not very warm, not much flying. Uh, this one is a real strong colony here. Again, no winter be kind on this one yet, and normal activity of dead bees at the bottom that they drag out or push out. But this hive, we put the winter bee kind on a few weeks ago, and even though it's pretty cold outside today, that's what I like about the winter bee kind. It allows these bees to go up and start eating the candy and the protein, but it also allows them to take cleansing flights. So like in this case, this one doesn't have it. Maybe the cluster is this high up, you know. It's a long way down to, to come out and fly out and take a cleansing flight, so they just stay clustered here. But if bees can relieve themselves and clean out their gut, it makes a much healthier winter bee. These bees know to not to fly too far away from the hive. They just kind of go out, they defecate, and then they come back out, uh, come back in. It's a really, really a neat thing. When I invented this, I was just making a vent at the top to get rid of moisture. I had no idea what it would do to increase the bees health. Um, so what we'll do though, we'll take a look. I looked a few days ago in here at the winter bee kind and there wasn't really a lot of activity on the board, although they had eaten some. It had gotten pretty cold and I noticed they all went back lower down. Um, so now let's just take a look and see if they're back on the winter bee kind. I couldn't I couldn't grab a hive tool really fast, so I just found the screwdriver. All right, let's go ahead and make sure I'm low enough like this. You can see how the cluster has moved up onto the candy and eaten a large part of it. But we'll come back when it gets really cold and we might observe they'll move down off of it. Okay, so a side-by-side -side comparison. One hive is flying, the other is not. Could mean that the big hive could be dead. The one beside it is not. And so let's just open it up and see what's going on in there. It does not have a winter bee kind on it, so we'll certainly need to put one on it today. If the bees are still alive. Ooh, bees, wow, all right. I see the top of a cluster, pretty high up in the colony. I'd like to know, um, let me move my camera in a little closer. Oh yeah, I wanted to show you if you can't see how there's no bees in the entrance flying down there compared to the one beside it. And yet we can see the top of the winter cluster. Uh, I'm going to raise this super up to see, you know, kind of how far down uh, the bees might be below this super. Should be using some smoke, but I'm not. Oh boy, that was, here they come too. Let's peek in there. Oh, it's full of bees. Oh my gosh. All right. So what we'll do, uh, let's put the top back on it temporarily. I'm going to grab a winter bee kind. I'll do a temporary top cover. It's just like that. And we're going to put a winter bee kind on there. Since they're at the top and not got not have a lot of food going on up there at the top, maybe. 
let's let's put a winter be kind on okay so i grabbed a winter be kind we're going to put that on there this is a very strong colony but they're going through a lot of food we have temperatures coming this weekend that are going to dip below zero going to get even in the negative numbers and so this hive needs some food just in case i mean they've got a lot of supers on here but who knows if they haven't gone through all that and most colonies die in february and march from a lack of food and they need to fly and defecate and like i showed you they're not doing that the bottom is there's no activity at the bottom and because they're clustered it's cold the hive with the winter bee kind next to it they're flying like crazy they're potting they're keeping their gut clean which reduces nosema buildup and all that good stuff like how how cool it is all right so look at all the bees that are up there and top here this sits the very top of it and i lifted up this super and they were all down below and they're just trying to get a lot of good food in there so let's go ahead and drop a winter bee kind on here uh, I'm doing it for two reasons. I'm doing it because it's going to get really cold soon this weekend, and I'm afraid they need it. And I'm also doing it because they're not flying, and they need to be flying. They need to be taking some potty breaks, right? All right. So I'm just going to lay it right on top here. Now, this is uh, not going to have a good propolis bite because the propolis is too cold at 28 degrees. But... Um, we're going to have to either put a, a brick on it, something heavy like a rock. Now, when you put your top cover on, make sure, you know, there's a little play like this in your top cover. Make sure the play is toward the front. That way the bees, um, it won't rain in the little slot because it's under the hood slightly. But it will allow the bees to go in and out. Let me drop the camera down and I'll show you. All right, so they haven't started going in and out just yet because I just put it on. Uh, but there'll be no time at all. They'll start uh, realizing that they can do what the other hive is doing here. So again, uh, these winter bee kinds are outstanding. When I first invented it, I don't know, a decade or more ago, I had no idea. I was just trying to make some ventilation to get rid of the humidity and the condensation that was building up on top of the hive. Never in my wildest dreams did I realize that I was also allowing these bees that don't want to go all the way down to the bottom of their hive in the winter and climb over their dead sisters to take a potty break, that it was allowing these bees to go out and take a potty break. And they're actually flying around the bee yard today. They're actually going out and getting some water out of the snow. It's pretty amazing. All right, well, that's a side-by-side -side comparison. These are some things you can do, still do, to help your hive face these really cold temperatures coming up in the next week or two. You know, uh, Puxahani Phil saw his shadow today. And, of course, uh, that's not probably something you're going to bank your meteorological skills on. But, but just for fun, he said six more weeks of uh, winter. Well, that's probably true here in Illinois, where I live. I mean, we're getting below zero in the next few days. I need these hives strengthened up with some food. Not going to wrap this one. Just doing a side-by-side -side comparison. Just going to keep one wrapped and one not. Uh, I can block the entrance off down there now, since I have just placed the winter be kind on this hive, and they can use it now. All right, guys, I hope this has been helpful. If you are interested in a winter be kind, we're almost sold out for the year, although we do still have a few left closing up this winter's uh, supplies. So get online, get those as soon as you can. Oh, and if you order one, uh, we'll get it out as soon as we can. Well, what I want to do today is take a look and see if the bees stay on. It's early in the morning, by the way. It's 15 degrees on my weather station and not much wind it's about 6 30 in the morning 15 degrees fahrenheit and you can see it's just not quite sunrise yet so i wanted to come out here and see if the bees actually get off of the winter be kind and go further down in the hive when it gets colder or are they able to stay up on the winter be kind at 15 degrees 
Oh, perfect. You can see the cluster in there, the top of it, but they do get off of it when it gets really cold. That's what I thought. They don't really eat candy off of it when it's extremely cold, at least not this hot. We could look at the other hive. We just put this on yesterday, and so they're probably not used to going up there yet. Oh, it's a bigger colony. We got to take a look at this. It must be because they are bigger or they're hungrier, but I saw bees up there. Oh, yeah, it's 15 degrees, and they're eating it. Hmm. So I really can't hold the one theory as to why this hive isn't eating it in cold weather. This one is, other than maybe this one is a little bigger, or they have less food, and this one has more food down below. Well, there you go. All right, well, that was amazing. I have learned so much today about watching my bees this winter. I didn't realize how dependent they are on that top entrance. Uh, eating the food up high and then also being able to take those potty breaks that they can't do if they don't have that upper entrance with the food that lures them up there and keeps them well fed during the, the winter time. So I, it's crazy. I, I love it so much that I invented these winter bee kinds. I know it sounds like I'm promoting my own invention, but if somebody else had invented this, I'd be telling you how good this is because, boy, why lose your bees in the wintertime when you don't have to? Uh, if they're starving, you can put that on there. Uh, the intake of this food helps them continue to raise brood and generate heat, and they can continue to take their potty breaks, which helps with controlling, uh, reducing nosema if they can keep their gut cleaned out more in the wintertime because, wow, here in Illinois, we can, do, we can go weeks sometimes, maybe a month, month and a half, and bees never leave their hive. But now they're, they do. It's only 28 degrees Fahrenheit, and look at them. They're flying like it's a summer day. This is so cool. Well, look at this. I'm pretty sure I knew what it was before I started reading, but it does say down here, coffee mug. So let's open it up. It looks like it's from Jim in Canada and he has got a lot of tape on this coffee mug so let's open it up and see what kind of coffee mug we're getting from canada bees are flying i hope i don't get stung in the face doing this video that would hurt and i would not be happy all right very good Ooh, got a note in it very nicely wrapped thanks jim all right. I went to Canada once, I think, when I was a kid with my parents. I don't remember it. I was too young. Other than that, my wife's been to Canada. I think she went up to Niagara Falls with her parents to visit Niagara Falls one time. I need to do that, don't I? All right. Ooh, thanks for the large print. Hi, David. A couple of months ago, I discovered your videos on YouTube. Since I have gone through and watched them all, I really enjoy your coffee time portion of the video. So I'm sending you this coffee mug, the crest on the mug, the shoulder flash for the Ontario Police, which I am employed with as a constable. I hope to start beekeeping this spring, so keep the videos coming. Merry Christmas to you and your family. Wow, Jim, nice to meet a constable, and thank you for your service as a police. That is really cool. It's a crest. Wow, that is beautiful. I feel privileged. Look at this. All right, well, I'm going to go inside, and we're going to get ready for coffee time.
Hey everybody, it's coffee time. And look at this shirt. You like it? 2020. Got a bad rating. Very bad. Would not recommend. <laughs> I thought that was a cool shirt. Well, welcome to coffee time. Trying out the coffee time with the new coffee mug. So happy to get this. Um, Ontario Provincial Police. And uh, what, a, what a nice gift. That's a nice coffee mug. I'm looking forward to, to using that. And uh, very good coffee today as well. So today I want to talk to you about success. All of us want to be successful. I think from a young child, we all want to be successful at something. Whether it's successful at sports or in school, maybe it's successful, we want to succeed uh, in front of our parents, to our coaches, uh, we're just constantly wondering, how can I succeed? And different personalities probably have more of that drive than others, but I would say most people uh, feel um, the pain of failure. And that's the opposite of success, we think, is if you don't succeed, you fail. So success is not failing. And yet, we go through life, and it's difficult to succeed in everything, it's impossible. And it's real difficult to succeed even at the things we want to succeed in. Well, let's take beekeeping. Who doesn't want to succeed at beekeeping? We want our bees to do well. We want to be a successful beekeeper. But it doesn't always go that way. Bees are a living organism. Things happen. Not only is there winter, but there's diseases, there's pests, there's just all sorts of things that can go wrong. Uh, all living things eventually die. So it, it's not always a bed of roses trying to keep bees. And we want to be successful, but we're met with a lot of failures along the beekeeping endeavor. Maybe we lose our queen, we feel like we're a failure because we forgot to do something that needed to be done, and as a result of our uh, not taking action, the hive died, and we feel like a failure. Wow. <laughs> um, I think back to when I was young. I wanted to succeed at everything I did. And everything I did as a young child, I put, I, I felt like I put my whole person into it. Uh, when I wanted to um, have a cool bike in the neighborhood, I did everything I could to make my bike really cool. I had a Stingray and I made it look cool by making modifications to my, my bike. And then as I got older, you know, I was in school, so I wanted to succeed in sports. So I ran track, I played basketball, and I worked hard to succeed at those things. And one of the things that I found, especially with basketball, you know, I, I was like six foot tall when I was in junior high, but I found that even after I played basketball in junior high, and then I started playing basketball in high school, that I was kind of tired of it. I, and in fact, I was tired of running track as well. And even though I had some level of success, you know, in basketball, being tall, I, I played a lot. But I never, I mean, I enjoyed it, don't get me wrong, but it wasn't something where I wanted to succeed and make a profession as an adult playing basketball. I got tired of it pretty quick, actually. A lot of trips in the school bus, going to, you know, different... Uh, basketball games, track meets, and that kind of got old after a while. And that's one of the things about success that's kind of misleading. We feel that if we achieve something and we get there, that we will arrive at some level of complete happiness and complete satisfaction. And that's just not true. We might be wanting to succeed at making a lot of money, having that perfect job, you know, an easy job. One of the things I've noticed with people is, and myself, is that we see success either on YouTube video or on television. You know, we see people that are successful in front of us, whether they're actors or whether they're sports athletes. And we think, wow, that's really cool. They're really good. And so we instantly think, all right, I'm going to do that. <laughs> and we go out and we try to, you know, in two days become like they are now. And we think, oh, shoot, I can't do that. I'm, I'll never be as good as them. I tried for two days. I'm done. And we fail to realize that the people that are very successful, whether they're winning uh, medals in the Olympics, whatever, 
they've spent a lot of time failing. They've, st they've spent a lot of time in pain and crying and not succeeding. I was reading about uh, Hillary that climbed the uh, Mount Everest, first person to climb Mount Everest. Uh, he attempted it in 1952 and failed. And then in 1953, he finally succeeded climbing to the top of Mount Everest. Nobody really talks about 1952. Everyone talks about 1953. Oh, he did it. He made it. He succeeded. Mm, but maybe he succeeded the minute he set his mind to do it. In fact, wasn't it pretty successful just getting ready to do it? You know, deciding how am I going to do it? What's it going to take? How do I prepare myself for it? So the journey is really the important part of succeeding. When we bring ourselves to the point where we're enjoying the journey of succeeding, we really don't have to succeed. And I think the best way to succeed is to not really be too concerned about the outcome. Now, I know we have to have goals and dreams, um, but sometimes we're going to still succeed even though we don't meet those needs because the journey and what we've learned along the journey was more valuable than actually not learning on the journey, but succeeding. So we could, we could have a great journey and fail to reach our ultimate goal and still be more successful than had we not enjoyed the journey, not learned on the journey, and succeeded. Does that make sense? You know, like, let's say you're working on gold Olympic medal, and you give up your soul to do it, you give up your life, you give up your family, and, you know, you, you wind up spending all of your money, you hurt your relationships with people that you love, but you win the gold medal. Well, now you go back home after all of that, years of training, and you have a gold medal, but you have nobody to share it with and no place to live and no future job. So there's a level of success that we need to realize that maybe success is small. Maybe it's the enjoyment of small steps. Success doesn't always have to be gold, silver, or bronze at the Olympics. Success can be achieving something today that meant a lot to you and those who uh, are your friends or your family. What did you do today to really succeed in the things that were cool for you, you know? Um, my wife today had to run our youngest son on a, an errand, and so while they were gone, I washed the dishes. I cooked a wonderful, wonderful meal. I had salmon, shrimp, I made some guacamole, guacamole, and then um, I made uh, chicken, barbecued chicken, just a wonderful meal. I, when Sherry got home, I was like, hey, Sherry, I know you've worked hard today uh, running our beekeeping business. And I said, look, I made, I washed the dishes and I made you supper. We men, we love to take credit for things that we do because I guess I don't do it that often enough. So I really try to show her what I've done. <laughs> but uh, just seeing her face and enjoy eating supper with her, that I had made for her, uh, it brought me a lot of success. I felt very successful as a husband in showing my love that way. So it doesn't always have to be these great moments of achievement in order to say we're successful. There's a lot of things that we dream about. We have dreams, we have goals, and we should have. It's good to have dreams. I've always had dreams and goals. Gosh, you know, right, right now, I, I'm amazed at how beautiful Florida is. Um, I really am. And I'm, I'm really uh, loving the idea, though it seems an impossible uh, goal for me right now, but I'm loving the idea of having uh, a, win uh, a place in Florida that I could spend two weeks or a month in every, every winter. I mean, you know, like this weekend here in Illinois, it's going to be a high of three degrees and a low of zero, something like that on Sunday. And, you know, it'd be so nice to be able just to, maybe for the month of January or February, go to Florida. I guess I'm getting old enough now where I qualify to be a snowbird or something. But, you know, it's just um, a dream I'm starting to catch on to that I'd like to have a place uh, that I could go to and enjoy the winter in, in Florida where it's warmer. And so I'm going to start dreaming about that. I'm going to start, you know, I'm going to start thinking, how can I accomplish that? 
and uh, maybe I'll only make it to Southern Illinois, <laughs> and that'd be fine. Maybe I'll make it to Tennessee, you know, just for two weeks or a month or something. It'd just be nice um, as, I, as I get older. Um, but anyway, if I don't uh, succeed at having a nice place to go to in Florida for the winter for a few weeks, a month, uh, I'm not going to cry about it. I'm not going to feel like a failure. It's just right now a dream, a goal, something that may come about. If it does, it does. If it doesn't, no big deal. I'd love to have 100,000 subscribers on YouTube by the end of the year. That's a very huge undertaking because beekeeping is a, is a niche. It's a very uh, small group of, um, of interest on YouTube. You know, I'm not making crazy YouTubes where I'm screaming and watching animals do crazy things. You know, that gets more views. So beekeeping, not so many. Uh, but I hope that by sharing these, uh, I guess, food for thought comments along with beekeeping, that maybe these uh, videos might uh, garnish up to 100,000 subscribers by the end of the year. And maybe one day behind me, I'll have a silver plaque from YouTube. So to summarize, I think we need to have goals and dreams. I, need, I think we need to work hard to accomplish things. I think when we're genuine uh, with our lives and we help others and we work hard at what we want to accomplish, we are successful people. Uh, we, we, are, we are faced with failures. Everybody that's ever uh, succeeded at anything has gone through huge, huge failures. And you may be going through a failure now. I've gone through failures, plenty of them. Uh, I've worked on, uh, like I've told you before, I've worked on two areas that I became masters in. And uh, I had so many failures getting to that point. It was just very, very challenging. But if you can meet each failure as something to learn from, then you, you can take another step forward and keep pushing for that. And then finally, be careful what you want to succeed at. Because if you spend your whole life putting all your energy into this one thing that you think would make you successful, and then you get there and you earn it, you achieve it, and maybe you're doing it, you might be saying, gosh, I don't like it. I thought I would like being here, <laughs> but I really don't. Um, so give that some thought. And if you do find yourself having succeeded at what you wanted to do to be successful, and now you feel very empty and dissatisfied with where you're at, don't give up. Uh, maybe it's time to make a change. Maybe it's time to say, I no longer want to work this job or this career. And there's nothing wrong at saying, I'm going to pursue something else. I'm going to kind of look into a different interest. Uh, no matter how old you are, you can always change and pursue something else. It's nothing to be ashamed of if you thought you wanted to be something and now you're doing it, but you're just like, oh, I got to wake up and do that again. <laughs> a lot of our jobs, a lot of our careers, we think would be perfect and then we get them and start working them and they just become another job. And it's not really all that exciting like we thought it would be. And there's a lot of politics that we didn't, uh, didn't expect. And then we find out, oh boy, I don't like to, I like doing the job, but I don't like the politics involved in having to keep the job, you know. So no reason to live a life under a lot of stress, hating your job and being miserable. Um, I'm not saying you should quit your job and, and be reckless. You know, you need to be a responsible person. But certainly you can start thinking about, mm, I need to learn what success is. And success is really enjoying those around me, helping people around me, uh, doing little tasks that bring great enjoyment, how I can encourage other people around me. And wow, when you start encouraging people, and you start helping people, and you start realizing what kind of impact you can have on other people's lives, that's success. All right, well, that's good. Well, subscribe to the videos. I appreciate you watching today. Hope you enjoy the beekeeping part and the coffee time, and click on the bell so you'll be notified each time I make a new video. I'll see you next time.